and Dale Jarrett. Neal the 32, Jarrett in the 90. Just coming off turn oh. four. Just gets into the left rear quarter panel. Dale Jarrett gets a little bit sideways, and Shane Mill pretty much gets into the left rear again. And then, of course, Michelle Jordan comes along. Hard lick right there. Shane Meal has showed no patience over these last 20 laps. He moved Kenny Wallace out of the way to pass him. He moved Clint Boyer out of the way to pass him. He gets it. Guys, I don't know about you, but he's got that look like he may have something he wants to say to somebody. I would say that may be where he's going. Now, the gentleman that I know Dale Jarrett to be, I don't think he's going to do anything that he shouldn't, but he's definitely going to tell this young man that that was unnecessary. Dale just waved off the NASCAR official, said, I'll be with you in just a minute. Very frustrated. You tried to tell Shane Mila what you thought. Well, we were already three wide. I mean, we had a slow car up high. John Wood had got loose there, and I got under him. Where do you think he's going? We're on a half-mile racetrack. He's got to use his head. There you have it. And, uh, Shane, we heard Dale Jarrett's side of it. He wasn't too happy. How about from your point of view? Uh, yeah, he's not too happy. It's, uh, you know, I, I hate it. I don't care about for Dale Jarrett. I just hate it for the wind fuel. Chevrolet, because we're the fastest car here, and lap cars cost 90% of the wrecks today, and uh, hurts us in the points. I'm sorry to uh, Dale Jarrett's car got tore, but when they're wrecking in front of you, and you're trying to move, and then you run into somebody, you know, how, how you going to blame that on somebody? But he threatened that he'd get me and all that stuff, and uh, he better hurry up. It's, he ain't got much longer. Thanks, Shane. One wall, watch him race with Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon here. Like I told you, when you come on the bottom like that, and you come up the track, you need the whole track, and... Looked like the 18 of Kyle Busch was about the right rear. Let's see where he is right here. He's right up to the corner. Yeah, just went in, run out of room. Boyer came up as uh, Kyle was coming off the corner. Okay. Now let's ride with Boyer. All clear, all clear, quick, get up there, outside, outside. All clear, all clear, all clear. He's in the fence, man. Yeah, I think the radio said clear, but I'm just don't appear it was clear. I'm anxious to see why Kyle Busch and that 18 didn't come to pit road. And uh, I think Clint Boyer knew. Clint Boyer has experience. Here, Kyle. They're calling A. Kyle, stop. Stop. They're calling you on that. Just stop. Remember, Clint Boyer has a little experience with people waiting on him. And this is uh, on board Dale Jr. Boy, did that car snap loose or contact? Was there contact? I, I believe you'll see right here. Oh, there yeah. was a little bit of contact. But That's Casey Mears Jr. had, I mean, he had his hands full without any help from anybody. <laughs> then on the cool, it's supposed to be the cool down lap. Watch this as Dale Earnhardt Jr. turns Casey Mears around. And before they get to the garage area, here comes Mears back at him. Pow. So evidently, now we kind of know who was involved <laughs> back on lap 301. Oh, yeah. Evidently. <laughs> it's almost like it's a little bit of a stack up right there of those cars getting in the corner. Yeah, and that's uh, Mike Lynette just seemed, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Amarola. Yeah, it looked like you just didn't anticipate things slowing down when you're you're under the you're just on a restart here. You have to anticipate that things are gonna be a little slower getting in there than than actual speed most of the time. So well see Brian Scott not very happy with him. Yeah, he was running ninth at the time and boy he is furious with Eric Amarola. Not the first time these two have had this kind of discussion. No, it's not the first time. They've had uh, a few issues along the way, and Andy and I saw the 11 fall back uh, there in that last run. Wasn't exactly sure what happened, but, uh, Jamie, you've got more? And we did catch up with Brian Scott. Not happy right now. We just saw you guys having some words. What was the issue, and what did you say? Uh, well, really, it's an issue that's been building all year. Uh, he's ran into the back of me on restarts. He wrecked me at Richmond. He walls me at Chicago. He, just, he races like it's the last lap every time he's around me, and... Uh, I've had enough of it. You know, he's cost me a car, and he continues to race like that. So I went and told him, and uh, I, I just told him how I felt. I told him that I owed him one, and I told him if he's going to continue to race like that, 
then uh, I'm probably going to slip up and wreck him. Misunderstanding of the, the call at the end of the race. He'll understand it, and I'm sure he'll clear it up in his interview. For us, we're great teammates. We're doing good together. We have to work together to beat all these other teams out there, and he knows that. We clean the side of our car out after the checkered flag, so I don't really understand that. But all in all, our Jimmy John Chevrolet did a did a team did a great job and, and uh, didn't have a scratch on it until then. So that's pretty good for Talladega. Did Kurt have any explanation for you? Uh, not really. <laughs> team meeting later, maybe. Probably. Yeah. They were having some contact at the end of the race. But not sure about some of this other stuff. I'm happy drivers for sure. Well, what's more? Matt X Matt Kenza. You hit me under yellow. 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 Tony Luce. Tony Luce. Tony Luce. Tony Luce. up at the entrance to the pit road. That's the hit Matt Kenseth was talking about. And while doing that, Kozlowski runs into the back of Tony Stewart. So then this. From Tony Stewart's bumper camera. Oh, and Jeff Gordon. Where in the world? Oh, oh, Bring it to me. He's over at the exit oh, of turn two and Jeff Burton involved. This had to happen. Yeah, and the opposite, opposite end, end of the away. God, we just wrecked on the back stretch. 24 cut up in front of me and caught my right front fender, my left front. Here's what happened with Gordon and Burton. Well, I don't know about wow. that. Hard contact for the 24. And they're going to go and talk it out here. Oh, uh -oh. and this is. Uh oh. Well, we've got a fight breaking out. Yeah, Jeff's not happy. Jeff, Jeff Gordon not happy with that, what happened there. Officials stepping in between, but this is far from over. I mean, there weren't even words exchanged. We came off turn four, and, and it's really hard to see off turn four, and he drove underneath me. And um, when he drove underneath me, I should have let him go, and I didn't. The caution came out, and he pulled up next to me to, to tell me that he was upset at me. And then he went he went on, and I went to pull up next to him to, you know, to acknowledge him, to say he was right. And I, I turned left, and he was turning left, and we just hung up, and when we hung up, off we went it was uh i don't i honestly don't know what happened it was my it was my fault 100 percent. it was my fault it's like once we got together i couldn't i couldn't get it off of him i didn't mean to hit him i made a pull up to him and tell him he was right because he was upset at me for what happened off turn four and uh i should have let him go because you can't see over there right now and you don't need to be side by side and you know he uh, i don't blame him for being mad i'd have been mad too and uh i don't know i guess he was just really frustrated with the way his car was handling or something and I mean, he just drove into my right rear and put me in the wall under caution. I'm, you know, of all the people out there, I never thought that it would happen with Jeff Burton. I mean, I've always had a tremendous amount of respect for him, but I certainly lost a lot of respect today. And <laughs> well, like I said, I knew he was going to be mad, and I don't blame him for being mad. He didn't do anything. Pie gets in some of that stay dry that was put down for the blown engine, and he just comes down right in front of Rusty's path, and Rusty nails him. Well, let's ride with Rusty Wallace in the Miller number two. the stage where I find out from behind the coach car. Oh, Daryl, no time to react. No, none no. whatsoever. And Rusty has taken his Dodge to the garage. It's tore pretty good right now. It's just the front got the radiator knocked in on it, the front grill knocked out of it, the nose knocked off it. So uh, they're going to get working real hard and try to get the thing back in shape, get it out, try to get some points. But uh, I had a really good car today if it wasn't for about the first five or six laps for Stuart and I got together and knocked a, he got me in a fence over there and I bent the lower ball joint in, then the car went to not handling right. So, uh, then we struggled around with it. We still had a pretty good car after that. You know, uh, they were reading off the times. It was an easy top 10 car, but uh, not to be today because of the wreck. But uh, <laughs> the Stewart guy, man, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. He's coming out of back straight with his finger out the window and just give me the bird all the way down the straightaway after he run me through the fence. So uh, I like to take that finger and jam it right his rear end, I'll tell you that, because he's messing with the wrong guy with that mouth right now. I'm not in the mood for him right now. John Hunter Nemechek wants the flag, and they're not going to give it to him yet. Oh, now we got it. Cole Custer and Nemechek. 
Cole Custer did not like the way. Well, a lot of emotion. Uh, your thoughts uh, the last lap and uh, after the race. I don't know. We had a really fast truck. Just uh, got taken out. He hit me going into the second to last corner. Then he hit me again. So I don't know what else to do. But that's how it is, I guess. I caught the double zero there. And um, we didn't wreck him for the win. Um, Robin's racing. But uh, if I would have been in the same spot, he would have done the same thing to me to get a win. Now, I know Cole Custer was a little displeased with you at, there at the end. Do you plan on having a conversation with him after this? Um, no. We'll and the tempers. That's Casey Mears and Marcus Ambrose. Those are two of the more low-key guys you'll ever run into in the garage. Oh, look, there, there, there's some actual shoving going on. There's a punch, a swing. This is not Ultimate Fighting on Fox. This is NASCAR on Fox, and we are live in Richmond with Michael Waltrip and Chris Myers. That, uh, oh boy. I don't know if, if that's Jeff Burton and Kyle Busch. Harsh words, and all in one direction. Oh, you don't see Jeff Burton get mad like that very often. Kurt Busch as the race winding down. This brought out the last caution here. Ryan Newman in the car right behind, 39. Ryan gets hit when he slows down to avoid Kurt Busch. Uh, really, that wasn't Kurt's fault as much as anything. It just was a racing accident late in the race. He spun out. Another crew member, one of of Ryan's crew members comes over to uh, Kurt Busch's team and starts uh, voicing his displeasure. And then on pit road, watch this. Yeah, this is after the race is completely over. The drivers aren't necessarily involved, although we did see Newman go over and talk to Kurt Busch. Remember, it was a year ago after the race, one of those in your face with uh, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. This time it's team members of Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman. That's just Southern 500 emotion. Like you said, we saw it last year with Harvick and the other Bush, and now tonight the crew guys are getting into it. The drivers had a conversation after the race, Ryan and, Ryan and Kurt, and they seemed fine with what happened. Then the crews got uh, involved. Sorry, let's watch here. Tony gets on the outside of the 40. I think when he goes up on the outside of the nine, oh, wait, wait a minute, we'll see. But you know what, what caused that? You got a guy that's not on new turn. Wow. BP, there's a big fight in the 20 pit. Tommy Baldwin, a number of the Dodge guys came down to talk to the 20 crew members. NASCAR officials do have Tommy Baldwin. They are trying to break this up. Huge altercation down here in the 20 pit, guys. See the back end of the 18 kick out. Okay, he got bit. into, he got it right into there. him. Moved him out of the way. Oh, He's got the right. lead. Here comes Kyle back at him again. He's going to get to him. Yeah, gave him a little shove. Ah, the bump and run, the Bristol move. There comes Denny Hamlin right there, too. Denny Hamlin said, My turn to play. I got a bumper, too. A few moments later. Here's the post race. There's well. still. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to Jamie Little. Oh, oh wow. Bobby Gordon with a hard hit. Michael Waltrip we're hearing involved. I'm down the back stretch. Michael turned the seven car into the outside wall. On the back of the 15. Of the seven, but we'll see how that works. Oh. Yeah, all right back there. I think he's going to try to pay him back with his helmet. I don't know. Robbie really loves his helmets. Yeah. Those paint jobs are quite expensive, they, too, Wally. They are, Matt. You're right. That's why you have second thoughts. Okay, here we go. Car with the helmet off. Uh, record just got there now. Let's see the accuracy. And it's a shot. Whoa. Well, I guess you don't like the helmets that bad. There's helmet at my car. I told you that. What's going on? Well, that's just rude. It was his fault. Robbie used those same words in this race one year ago. And, you know, I think that there's a difference of opinion there. Michael said it was Robbie's fault, and I'm sure that Robbie doesn't see it that way. Doesn't see it that way. That's right. 
Okay, here's today's helmet tossing event. Wow, that was pretty gutsy. It's like a bullfighter. Tony about to run over the helmet. You can sure he doesn't. You know, Michael, everybody thinks Michael's this good guy. He's not the good guy like he actually is. The caution was out, and he wrecked me. And he's a piece of Brad Keselowski's team and the 20 of Denny Hamlin. This is one of the reasons why, guys. This is May of last year. Yeah, it's not the first time these two drivers have been to, uh, together on the racetrack. And right here, another little uh, fisticuff broke out at Charlotte after that. Now, uh, late in this race, this is what happened as the laps were closing down. The contact, Denny ends up into the wall. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Brad on, thought he had a run on, and on, enough on, room on, on, on the on. inside, but Denny was just Stop driving his car down. back it's to his they were trying to go around the lap car. And then after the race, this was just comes to pit road just a few moments ago. And now let's check in with Jamie Little.